Andy, thanks for bringing your car in. That's no problem. Um, yeah, pleasure. First, first transactional in, so I'm, I'm quite excited. I'm quite honoured. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> been, um, yeah, obviously I've been following your journey for quite a while, and I brought this up probably within a few months of me owning it. So, mm. yeah, to yeah, be I mean, asked we've to come back other... again. When did, we, when did we first meet? Was it 2017, 18, something like that? 18, I think, or 19, yeah. Before yeah. you did the first oil cooled or megaphonics? Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you've always been really supportive of, of what we've been up to. I really appreciate that. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, really, I really enjoy it. I really kind of enjoy the, the passion you've got for it. This isn't your average project. Like, this isn't just a, I've got a couple of cars in my, in my garage. This is, I've got some really cool cars, but actually I want to share it with more people. Yeah. And yeah, I really admire that. Well, I think quite simply the way I see it is that it, I see it more as like, this is a glorified business park effectively. Um, it's bricks and mortar and some land. Yeah. Um, and effectively it's, yeah, it's the people that make it full stop, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, so, so, so credit's where it's due. We wouldn't be where we are if we didn't have some of the support of people like yourself who are kind enough to take interest in, in what, we're, what we're brewing up here. Um, okay, on to the more important stuff. So uh, <laughs> we've got a 944 here. Yes. Uh, I can see that. Now, I've got to be honest, I don't know much about transaxle cars, so I'm, I'm fully expecting that I'm going to ask you some really um, inverted commas stupid questions. I'll try and do my best to ask And them, um, yeah. I'm looking forward to being educated. <laughs> so if anything, on a selfish level, I'm just looking forward to learning about something new. Okay, so cool. hopefully won't cover stuff that all our audience already know and they're going to they're get bored about. Um, so what year is the car? Eight, it's an 86 model. It's an 86. Um, so they, 944, they did two sort of versions, if you like. They did the square dash, which basically has the 924 dash yes, in it. Yes, yes. And then this is what they call the first year of the oval dash, which mm -hmm. is a bit sort of more modern, a bit sort of more 911-esque, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually driving in it, it doesn't feel like a car that was made in 86. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like it's sort of mid-90s car. In what it, sense? It, it just feels, so I think the aesthetic of the dashboard, that earlier the dashboard. The atmosphere you're in. Yeah, that earlier yes, dashboard okay. is very square. I, when I bought this car, I had a 1970s VW Polo, okay. which was very 70s, and I didn't want that. I wanted something which was more, a little bit more modern. But do you still. know what? We don't usually do it in this way, but we're on the subject, and it feels natural to talk about it. So let's just go straight into the interior. Yeah, um, I can do it if you want to. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, it has that kind of 90s aero feel. Like, it's much more, it's much more rounded, right? The squarer kind of stuff, you kind of associate more with, like, the 80s. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, lovely. Do you mind if I have a seat? No, right? no, go for it, yeah. yeah. God, look at the pattern on these seats. So the that seats... That is wonderful. I look think... It smells I, great as well. <laughs> I, love, I love an... In My dad was a coach trimmer, so I've got a kind of a, mm. a sort of a thing for interior smells, but yeah. I've not done anything special You've got a thing with it. for interior smells? <laughs> It sounds really terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, that's cool. No, but, I get it. Um, yeah, it smells of Porsche, doesn't so, it? So, yeah, in, inside, I, th I think it's had the front seats changed. I've been told they're 911, I'm not sure. Interesting, okay. Um, but, yeah, they're fairly comfortable. They've got some four-way electrics on them. Yeah, yeah. Tom, um, can, can, if, if, if you haven't had a chance yet, zo zoom in on this bit. Look at the, look <laughs> at the seat, um, the seat part of the seat. The seat part of the seat? The bump pad of the seat? I don't know. The base of it. The base, yeah. It's that got just, all the cracks. That gold. That is wonderful. Um, you know, it's the door cards. So the door cards are a bit of a DIY special. So, so wait, hang Sorry. on. Sorry. I still want to talk about these seats. So do you, um, what have you done to them? Have you colonised them at all? No, I've done you, nothing. I've kind of given nothing. them a wipe over with a sort yeah, of all yeah. surface cleaner, yeah. but that's it. I wouldn't touch them. <laughs> some, people, some people would look at that. I would, yeah. Some people would, all, would look at that and just think, you know what's called it needs colonizing and needs yeah. retrimming this and the other but like it would just be sacrilegious that's wonderful that wear there's there's nothing really original about this car for so from that point of view like i'm not sort of wedded to them yeah. and I've, to I've toyed with kind of the bucket seat route like, yeah. but as we'll kind of come on to i've got two young daughters and there is an air of practicality about this car yeah. slightly well that, I, yeah 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 that Sorry. you can kind of chuck a child in the back or two or your wife or whatever and mm -hmm. um, you can go to the shops if you need to. Well that's the wonderful thing here you've got those rear seats you can enjoy this with the family. Sometimes when you have a car that's like too driver focused whether it's um, too harsh or bucket seats or this or the other doesn't have rear seats then all of a sudden as a car you lose you, you use less yeah um, because of what's called yeah family life right. Um, and in fact, I can see you've got a baby seat in the back here. So a yeah, I've got, I've got a booster seat, which yeah. um, if you pick the booster seat up, you'll notice on the bottom okay. of it, there's a, um, there's a DIY modification to take care of the fact that it, 
So it's got a bit of foam taped on the bottom. Oh, I can see so that. So you notice yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sort of shaping that so it's um, yeah. slightly better. So when I got the car, it only had lap belts in the back. Uh -huh. So the early 944 models only had lap belts. It was only after about 87, 88 that they welded in brackets to have three-point inertias. Okay. So I've had the brackets put in, right. which then makes it a bit easier to put the kids in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With static belts, sometimes if you've got smaller children, you can't get them short enough to hold the kid in tight enough. And okay. you can't get a proper baby seat in the back of those. So let's say, let's say I'm, I'm in the market for a 944 and I'm wondering whether it will fit into my life with kids. How old are your kids and, and at what age do you think they're no longer going to be able to fit in the back? At the, yeah, the moment I've got a, yeah, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, uh -huh. the eight-year-old fits fine with kind of no boost booster seat yeah um there's gray areas over legalities we'll kind of just say that do okay. your research um <laughs> the five-year-old sits on the booster seat and that's fine with that lap belt i'm kind of i'm happy that she's secure and whatever much younger than five then yeah they've been in sort of a booster seat on the front seat mm. that then means my poor wife sits in the back <laughs> which is why yeah we've done we've done food shops and stuff in it when the daily driver's been so broken or whatever but did, did i just hear that right did you say your missus gets in the back she has done. Has she? I, my, um, my brother's 6'2". Yeah. He, did, he did all the way back from Brands Hatch in the back. Fuck me. So did he go and see the chiropractor afterwards? <laughs> so <laughs> I basically, I lent him the car. Yeah. He took, he's got a two-year-old son. Mm -hmm. um, it was his son's first time at Brands Hatch. And I basically said, take, take my car, yeah. put the seat in the front for your boy, and take him up to Brands Hatch. And I'll hitch a ride with my friends. Yeah, yeah. So he drove the car all the way up there. And he calls it, yeah, he calls it my racing car. But and then on the way home, I needed to drive. So yeah, Mike got in the back. So you kind of sit half sideways yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the back on the way home. But Fair yeah. enough. I've never noticed how, do you think there's, sorry, just quickly, do you think there's more space? We're talking a lot about the rear seats. I promise you we'll get into the Audi <laughs> bit soon. But um, do you think there's more space in the back of this than there is a 911? I've only sat in the back of late 911s, I think. 997, probably. Mm. I've not sat in many early ones in the back. It looks about the same, just eyeballing it, I'd say. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I've sat in the back kind of to whiz around the block when I've let people drive it. Sure. It's, it's not kind of a comfortable, comfortable space, but it's great for a pub, like a pub run or something if you're... Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, he, we got back from Brands Hatch with him in the back. <laughs> and uh, Love it. Uh, Do you know what? It's, it's, it's weird for me because I'm so, for me, like, you know, what's called, I'm, I'm so into like, uh, like the 911 and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's unmistakably Porsche, but it is, it is foreign to me. Mm. Um, and I love that, the unfamiliarity, the discovering something new. Um, I think the touch yeah, points are really, really, ergonomically, the steering wheel and the gear shifter, I find it very, very comfortable to drive. Do you know drive. what? It's a really nice driving position, isn't it, actually? Um, you've and got your, your handbrake and your, on. And your, um, your feet are straight. Yeah. Like in a, in, a, in a 964, which I guess is the equivalent 90s 911, right? Yeah, I guess, oh, this, this would have been out with a G-body. Oh, so the G-body. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, they're so offset, the aren't they? The, t the, the pedals are completely offset. This is, this is dead straight. This yeah. is how it should be, really. Yeah. You make compromises for the cars that you love, but I've got to say, a, a nice straight driving position. Yeah, you don't get, you don't get this in, in a 911 from this period. Yeah, no, that's lovely. Um, and I love the, um, the gear shifter so close. Yeah. It's right next to the steering wheel, and it's a real short and stubby one. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's been modified. So kind of a shout to the guy who had it a few times ago. I think his name was Jack. Uh -huh. um, he did quite a lot of messing around with it before kind of I had it and the previous owner had it. So I mm. think that's probably something he did. Mm. Um, never met him. He's up in Scotland, but mm. um, that was his work. The steering wheels, one I bought, um, I used to work for a large motoring parts re retailer and um, that mm. was... Um, on their reduced rail X display one day, I bought it for 25 quid in the early noughties, <laughs> nice. and it's done a number of cars. I just really like it. Momo Competition. Yeah, it's really nice, and and you don't see them that often. I can't remember the last time I saw a Momo Competition. I had a Model Seven in it when I bought the car, and you see those every. I mean, they are awesome. I understand, and I have them. Um, but but yeah, this is it was much dished. Original, That's what I didn't it? like. It kind of then came out a bit further, yeah, you don't and really actually need it here, the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm sat in it. I did a track day with it. And I also had the stock wheel. I, I sold the stock wheel. I hmm. thought that was kind of just too thin. This just felt really comfortable. It's almost like a club sport width. Yeah, yeah, no, it feels good. It's a um, nice diameter. It's a nice shape. It's more interesting than the usual Mod 7 you see everywhere, quite rightly. And um, so how long have you had this steering wheel, sorry? <laughs> Since probably 02, something like that. Now, do you know what? What's interesting is like not that long ago, we had... Um, a guy called Justin Spangler, uh, sorry, Justin Humphreys, he calls himself Spangler, I can't remember exactly what the reason is behind it, I think it's the nickname. Anyway, I digress. He, he's had a steering wheel that he's had for, um, I think his wife bought it for him when he was 19, he's now 
who's going to crucify me for getting the age wrong, but he's had it a very, very long okay. time. And it was, it was interesting hearing him have that relationship with that steering wheel that he's brought with him on, across different yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think that, suffice to say, that having, since having that, had that conversation with him, I think I've got a new level of appreciation for a different steering wheel than the one they usually see and one that an owner's had for a while. Yeah, there's an absolute... It's, that, it's, that, that's been in polos, it's been in the Jetta, well, there you go. Golf. Yeah, you've taken it with you. Yeah. And that's cool, you know, that, that that's the steering wheel that you kept with you that's, that's, um, that's been on that journey. Um, so, yeah, yeah like going that. back to where that came from, Sorry, so the, yeah. the head unit oh, yeah? was kind of the top of the range head unit when I was working in Sedge Store. Uh -huh. And I bought that on Facebook Marketplace a few years ago for 25 quid untested. Okay. But that was... I was like, yeah, I really want that unit. Brushed aluminium and everything. Yeah, and, it looks um, nice. Yeah, I like yeah. that. And what's, um, what's this? And that's an LCD clock. It's very, um, yeah, very common not to work as mine doesn't work. Interesting. Something you'll discover about, about me, although I do what I, what I do, um, I'm very good at not fixing stuff, which is quite easy to fix. <laughs> so for example- Well, you're prioritizing the important things, right? The, the day yeah. I bought the car, I drove the car home and on my way home, the indicators stopped working. Mm. And I was like, what's going on here? And I phoned the guy and said, have you ever had a problem with the indicators? He was like, no, 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 no. And I discovered the, the way to fix the indicators uh -huh. was to flick the hazards on and off, and then it would jump start them and start them working again. <laughs> so if ever I lent the car to someone, I'd be like, just if the indicators stop working, don't worry, just flick the hazards on and off, and they'll start working again. Yeah, and I drove cause like, an accident on the motorway. I drove you know? like that for three years, probably, before right. thinking, I might better get a hazard switch. And I changed <laughs> the hazard switch for one that was about £20 second hand. It fixed the problem. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very good. OK, cool. Let's hop back out. Actually, door cards. These, are, these look a little bit more uh, lightweight than they usually would. Yes, yeah, so this is another, I think, something from the previous owner, Jack. Sort of clubs, yeah. club sport spec. Um, yeah, DIY, basically covered MDF. Mm. Um, it does mean you've got a bit more sort of leg room. They do, they do get kicked a little yeah. bit, but um, nice. yeah, they're quite nice. And it's a kind of like, they're what would you say, like a... F faux suede-ish. Faux suede. But, but yeah, it's, it's nothing know, I, special. I, I it's not called, Alcantara. It's I'm not. a bit of a mongrel and there are some French in me. So whenever I hear, I hear faux, it makes me laugh <laughs> because it means fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like they've, they, the English have adopted faux to sound <laughs> really more sophisticated <laughs> when it comes to like faux leather. It's like that literally translates to fake leather. But you know, make it French and all of a sudden it sounds a little bit more sophisticated. That's now vegan leather, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. just vinyl seats yeah, yeah, from yeah. the 70s. Yeah, yeah. No, that looks really cool. I like the little. Um, so yeah, it's got RS the little RS yeah. type pull. Yeah, very cool. Nice. Okay. And um, talk to me about the roof because like. So the roof, it's got a sunroof. It's got a sunroof. Um, originally, they'd be um, mechanically operated. This one's had the electric stripped out of it. Uh -huh. um, and it's basically just on four tags, and you can lift it out. So you end up with a... Is that right? So yeah. it's not electric? And this it one isn't, because they've had the... Uh, on the originals, it's t electric tilt, yeah. or you can disconnect it and yeah. pop it out. This one's just manual. Right. Um, whether it was an electrical gremlin or whether it was a lightweight saving, I don't know. But sure. um, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can pop that out. Dude, check out the size of this panel. It's huge. It's yeah, a little you, bit you, of a faff. There's definitely, there's definitely no way that that could be electric. But like having this size of a sunroof um, is awesome. I mean, you must get huge amounts of light coming through. You get a lot of light. Obviously, yeah. What you also get is a huge amount of heat. So obviously it's got a whole black cabin. It's not got air conditioning. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's hot in the summer. Toasty. Like, and... Um, Obviously, if you take that out, then you've got air coming in, but you, when you're stuck on, tr on the motorway or whatever, <laughs> in the yeah. baking heat, you're like, actually, I think... But if you think about it, like, I think, like, a, a 964 roof, I'm just looking at... The oh, yeah, much smaller, aren't they? It's like, it's like, what, half the size of this? Yeah. So the amount of light that you must get in must be wonderful. I yeah. don't take it out very often, to no. be fair. I it's mean, quite a faff. It's, it's not dreadful. It, yeah. yeah, it's four clips and it comes out. Putting sure. it back in, slotting it in is slightly easier. But and, and where does it store? Is there something you have to store in your garage or can you store it in the boot? Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's got like a leather sleeve. I've not okay. got it with me, but yeah, it's got that with it. Right. Um, so let's say it's pissing it down. How long does it take you to put the roof back in? Only a couple of minutes. Yeah, so not bad. You can, oh, you can do it if you want to. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no, no. Um, I, it's just from a, from a, from a um, continuity point of view, it would probably upset the flow of your film, but we, could, we can do it if you want, and then it's up to him whether he wants to edit it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you want to do it, I'll do it, it's fine. Well, I've, you've got me curious now. Yeah, it's cool. Is okay. that cool? Yes, fine, yeah. Is that all right? Is it not too much real fat? No, so basically you've got these tags here. Okay. 
So it is it is a bit like a target because yeah. Got so there, that's like that. Yeah. I've got the same on the back, which you just twist 180 degrees. I think. So we've got four tabs. Uh, or 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. that, and well, then literally you lift it up and slide it backwards. Slide like that. Slide it backwards. Okay. Right. Wow. So we can yeah, we can leave it yeah, off. That if is you want. a huge amount of light. There we go. Yeah. I love that. Let's put that to one side. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got it. So it's pretty light as well, actually. I think so it's, not two, it's not a two-person job, is it really? No. If yeah, if it started raining, it's not the end of the world yeah, to yeah. Um, to try and put that back in again. Yeah, it's I just mean, a case of yeah, lining it back up on this to put it back sure. in. That's really lifted the interior, like just you know what's called having that much of light come through. Mm. It's completely, yeah, that's that's super cool. I love so that. So yeah, as long as long as it's not silly hot, yeah, yeah, it's quite nice. And I'm glad we got it out. <laughs> and you're right, it is a relatively quick job. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, um, I won't put it back in on on film because I'll end up faffing for ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, one of the standout features for me of. Uh, of, of the 944 is this rear glass. Yeah. You know, like what's it called? The, the Targas have this kind of curved glass and, so, and the transaxles as well. And I just, I absolutely love it. You know, just that, that curve here, it's just so beautiful. It's really cool. It's, it brings a, yeah, I like was we saying we're taking that out. It brings a lot of light in. I don't like claustrophobic cars. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it just does add. Yeah, nice. and, the, and the boot is a really decent size. You can flip the back seats flat. Yeah. So yeah, owners of these. Yeah, yeah. I think you can get two mountain bikes in the back of one of these as long as you take the front wheel off. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, uh -huh. Nice. Can we open up the boot? Is that all right? Yeah. Give me a sec. There is a. Um, so you can do this electrically, but the the electrics, obviously, being almost yeah. forty years old, aren't great. Uh -huh. It's sl slightly full of um, my rubbish. Can we leave that open just for a second? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, like. Um, yeah, so it really is the boot. It's all glass. Yeah. That open. It's the glass hatch that opens. It's nothing yeah, to do with I think it's work. got a very thin frame, and they yeah. have a habit yeah. of the glass can come away from the frame, so yeah. it's slightly delaminate, um, and then you end up with sort of water. And this does let a little bit in. Yeah. Obviously, you get a little bit of drips, but yeah, this that folds flat. Like that. So actually, if you needed to either sleep a child or move a yeah. bicycle yeah. or a small chest of drawers or something along those lines, it's got some some practical merit do you know do you know what i love is like often enough people go sports car i'm practical it doesn't fit in the world and this and the other but actually porsche's always been really good at making i think practical cars because you think about it even with a 911 you have got rear seats yeah you can put the seats down and actually you can you can get a lot of luggage between the front and the back and all the rest of it and you look at a car like this like actually that is a lot of luggage space you could definitely yeah. do like a well over a week's worth of holiday road tripping in a car yeah, like if you this. only got yeah only got a couple of you yeah. um and yeah no that's really cool love it i mean the thing is is like it sounds like a boring topic practicality but it <laughs> is important because it means you use the bloody car it doesn't end up being something that gets dusty in the garage i think oh yeah when i set out to buy this um i was very fortunate i inherited a small amount of money from my grandmother mm -hmm. and um having kind of previously yeah had a few sort of windfalls and spent it on practical things like rewiring houses and stuff i said to my wife Look, i'm gonna buy myself a bit of a treat yeah I set, set out to buy myself kind of a good S2, which is a three litre 16 valve, the later version. Mm -hmm. I wanted to spend about 10 grand, which is sort of where they sat at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought from an investment point of view, and this came up, it belonged to a customer at work actually. Yeah. Um, I got put onto it from a friend of mine. So um, this is Heritage Parts? Yes, yeah, yeah Heritage Parts okay. Centre, yeah. Um, yeah, he was a customer there, he got a T25, he got this. And um, it was half the price basically. I paid five grand for this car. Mm -hmm. And it's not perfect. The paint is, it's a respray. It was a silver car originally, kind of back okay. in the day. Yeah. Um, I think it was painted around 94, 95, according to some of it, MOT history. Yeah. Um, it's by no means stock, which is exactly not what I wanted. But actually, because it's not perfect, there are some scuffs on it. I use it. I'll drive it. I drove it here in the pouring rain. I'll leave it in a car park. I'll let other people drive it. Mm. And actually, I think I've had much more fun from having a car that's 70% yeah. rather than a car that's 98% yeah. because I think I would have been scared to drive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in my mind, a perfect car is an imperfect car. Um, cars, that, cars that stop you from using them don't really make sense. The whole point is it's got four wheels and it moves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's not moving, there's something wrong there um, and you're not creating memories, really. So what's the point? No, that's super cool. So, so it was silver. And yeah, so what, the, color, what color is it now? 
It's so what was your original colour, sorry? It's, yeah, it was, I want to say Zermatt silver. Oh, that's a lovely colour, to be fair. Um, it's got that little um, bronze, no, not bronze, a little bit of gold in it, the Zermatt silver. It's slight, yeah, you can kind of see on the insides of here. I think that's kind of the original shade there. Mm. Um, yeah, nice. Okay. And um, yeah, it's now a Mitsubishi colour. Okay. Um, you know what, if you told me that this was a Porsche colour, I would have believed you. It's very close. I think it's called Baltic Blue. Yes, yes, the, yes, yes. The, the Porsche 944 yeah. colour. So if you sit one next to each other, this is just a yeah. bit more rich. It's but a I get, lovely colour. I get so many compliments on it. If, it, if a photos kind of get shared on the internet, I put it out on my Instagram and stuff, but yeah, when mm. other people share it, they want to know what the colour is, what the code is. <laughs> so potentially a few years time, there'll be loads of this colour, but. The wonderful thing, yeah, yeah, okay. But the wonderful thing is that you've got a unique car. Yeah, you know, this is not replic. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not going to be able to say it. replicable. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, you'd, say that it's, right? yeah. No one can go out and buy this car. They'd have yeah, to, exactly. They'd have you to know, kind of do this some. Is, this is uniquely this 944 in this color. Yeah. So yeah, if you look at kind of other things which is unique to it at the back, um, I think, again, previous owner mm. put the turbo lip on the bottom. Yeah, it looks good. So that sort of boosts. I like that boosts it up. I think originally it would have either had nothing or it would have like what they call the toast rack, mm -hmm. which is like the, the, the vertical slots at the mm -hmm. back. Um, and you've got the yeah, Dansk exhaust on the back as well, stainless steel exhaust. Super nice. I love your press plates. I love these, like the steel ones, yeah, which yeah. are pressed. Like the gel ones, I think look nasty <laughs> as hell. Yeah, they're, they're the right sort of period ones. for the car. I didn't, again, I didn't do them. They were on the car. Oh, were they? I've been so lucky with the stuff that's kind of come on the vehicle. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, the, the, yeah, the wheels were on it, but yeah. I had them refurbed. So um, these are cup ones. Yeah, ball bet replicas of. Do you know what? They're pretty damn good, actually, because usually a lot of the replicas look a little bit too square. But um, these are quite rounded. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I've yeah had, they look good. Yeah, I had them refurbed, and I had them refurbed about three and a half, four years ago. Mm -hmm. So they've lasted pretty well. I have one of them straightened, which has got some scuffs on where they did the okay. work. But nice. they fill the arches really nicely. Yeah, yeah. They give it a bit of a modern touch. And are you running any different suspension? Because the car looks on, like it sits a bit lower. It's on gas coilovers, again, courtesy of previous owner. Yeah. I've had it, uh, the Geo set up on it. Nice. Um, so that, that's been done. And um, it sits yeah, that's nice. It does, yeah. It's like what's called, you know, there is something to be said for a car that has like the tires the tire and wheels like properly stanced out. I mean, the 993 there is probably yeah. the best example of it. Um, but this is nice. It's, it's subtle. It's definitely lower than standard but it's not stanced out to fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I can do speed bumps, I can do, yeah, unless they're sort of like so that. It works. Um, yeah. yeah, you can use it around town, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, it's a practical ride height, Wonderful. but I've done some track stuff with it. I've done good with a few Have times. You? Nice. And um, yeah, it's performed pretty nicely, so. Well, what's it like on track? Beautifully balanced, I suppose. Yes, although the, kind of my track experience is limited in other stuff. Like yeah. I've done taster days in like an M3 and a single seater, so your comparison mm. is is tricky. And also, being a track novice, mm -hmm. you're you're driving at sixty percent. You like your baby as well. I, was, I spun it kind of the first time out. My brother spun it the first time he drove yeah. it. Like it's nice. it's um I'm yeah I'm not afraid to push it, but equally Good. um yeah it's me learning the car. Yeah. And it's a special thing, like I said, like it's unique. You're not going to find another one in this Mitsubishi color, you know, it's, no. yeah. Um, it's yeah, along the yours. side, we've got Porsche script handles. Again, yeah, another, about that. another thing which, um, yeah, I don't know whether they would have been on there originally or not. It's they not did do them on 944 and normally they're black. Yes. Um, so so these have been, these I think have they've been, been polished what, up. Back? I think they're, okay. yeah, I think they're alloy. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, something which came on the vehicle when I got it. Um, I love em embossing. Yeah, they're really you nice. Know, or engraving, there. whatever you call it whatever the process is for these. But yeah, there's something nice about the texture. And then, yes, yeah, so we've got cut mirrors. Yeah, so kind of, would you normally have cut mirrors? Or would they no, they never, they never came on 944. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these would have been off 968 or I think possibly 964. Let's have a look. So, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think similar. I think well potentially they're identical to me actually. They're, um, yeah. They look good. They're, yeah, you can see on this one, I think it's a, it's mm. been red once upon a time. And the, the paint colour, when someone was painting it, I don't know if it's been painted the Porsche colour. Yeah. So you can kind of just see they're a slightly different shade. See, this is the kind of thing that you would see. It's an owner talking about his own car, whereas the general public wouldn't see it. Um, oh, that's cool. But yeah, again, it sort of just adds to it. And then the yeah. front, you again wouldn't notice, but hmm. normally these have got like a big knobble. 
mm -hmm. on the yes, front. Yes, yeah, 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 they do. They, the little rubber... Yeah, and they have know, like a black stop. surround, which go, or a colour-coded surround, and like a big bumper uh -huh. noggin type thing. So, yeah, again, previous owner had smoothed them off yeah. and gone without it. Looks this good. is just a, a fix for a broken light. Sure, sure. Um, but it makes it, it almost sort of gives it a, an in-between yeah. stage between that S2 and turbo front yeah. bumper, which is deeper, yeah, yeah. and that earlier sort of um, well, it makes 70s it more of a hot look. Rod, which is cool too. Um, I'll tell you what I love is this. This crease here. Yeah. And the widening here. It's just... Yeah, there's some muscular. lovely lines, and, and you, the, you again the at the same back. Thing on the back, yeah, exactly. When you sit in the, that crease here, and that, do you see that you can? Yeah, you can see that, and that can is a you? brilliant yeah. view in your rear view, like That's sat nice. in traffic or whatever. Yeah, that's um, no, a beautiful piece of design. That square. What's interesting about it also is, yes, it is. There's a curve to it, but it is quite square. Mm. You know, and actually, the rest of the car is quite square as well. So it's it's an interesting one. No, I, I think yeah, I think it's a beautiful line. It's a really nice detail. And um, we can't not talk about the pop-up headlights. Can, can you pop them up? Can we yeah, have a look? Yeah, just grab them. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Key. Um. Ooh. I think, yeah. Yeah. Do you want the left up? Yeah. I haven't had a proper look at it yet. They yeah. might not be filled. The thing with pop-up headlights, oh, you forget to wash them. Headlights. Yeah, that's the point, actually. Yeah. So yeah, the only course. time you've got them up is when it's dark. So when yeah, you wash yeah. the car, yeah, probably, obviously I've just done a journey up and they're going to be yeah, filthy. Yeah. But yeah, you, they probably only get a wash every time. Honestly, every like what's called, I've had, I've had a car with pop-up headlights before. And even during the day, I used to drive with the lights up <laughs> because I just think it looked so cool. You know, they look, they pop up headlights. I almost feel like they need to be up permanently. <laughs> they just look so good. Yeah. It's so I, sad that you can't. I mean, nowadays it's because of regs and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, such an, it's such an awesome thing. They, they make you smile. And also they make you they smile do. when you see kind of the kids going to school and they're like, look, dad, it's a Ferrari. <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, oh, okay, oh, yeah. Just, even if you don't need the lights up, you pop but them I'm, up just for fun. It's such a, a thing, isn't it? Like the 928s, they have their pop-up headlights, which is like a, a very different way yeah, of doing yeah, yeah. it than these. And all the cars of that area, like Lotuses, the Ferraris, Everything does anything. Everything is better with pop-up headlights. <laughs> I, lo I love I love flat nose cars. Yeah, yeah. So like the G series, like if you're gonna go with G series, for me it's like 80s excess. Yeah. So you want to go with like the wide body, the what's called straights on the side, the pop-up headlights. You know, I think one of the ultimate cars <laughs> has probably got to be like an 89 turbo with uh, with a flat body. Yeah. Um, from factory, a flat bar. That's a pretty. I just love them. I just love them. It's just it's of that period, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, they look absolutely awesome on this car as well. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting as well because you've got, you've got what is essentially a square pop-up with a yes. round light inside it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're not the greatest, to be fair. I've done a wiring up low upgrade, so it takes the power direct from the alternator, mm. so it bypasses the, the ignition circuit. That helps. Put some slightly better bulbs in, but yeah, they're not the greatest lights in the world by mm. any means. But um, super cool, right? Talk to me about this bonnet. The bonnet, because this bonnet, it's seen some to, action. To be it? blunt, we've got what have we got? We've got some bubbling. We've got some. We've got some paint runs. There's some serious matte to it. What's is there a plan? What would you do? Do you want to do anything with it? I think, yeah, possibly. I guess one one day, kind of money money allowing, maybe I'd just. I'd repaint the whole thing, but I, I got into the car thinking, and a bit, and a bit like people get into 911s, mm. once you've got the basics, you can then do whatever you want with it, can't you? You can hot rod it, you can restore it. Like I could be doing this when I'm 60 mm. and just build, building upon it and all the rest. So yeah, it's, at some point, it, it was shinier than this when I first got it. It has faded. It lived outside for a little Which bit. Which is great, because it means you've used it. Yeah, yeah. It lived outside for a bit, and there was kind of foxes yeah. and cats ice skating on the bonnet and everything. And yeah. So it's had a few scuffs. But that's life, you know? Like, that's had life. I yeah, mean, yeah. Me, personally, if it was my car, and it is not, and whatever you do, I'm sure <laughs> it'll be awesome. But I would be, like, focusing purely on the mechanical stuff. Yeah. And actually, you know, what's it called? In, in, in 10, 15, 20 years... This, this, this could turn into patina, this could turn into more. Yeah, and yeah. Suddenly it's got even more character and more to it. I, yeah, yeah I, I don't personally, know. Personally, I wouldn't touch it. I'd just be like, yeah. I'd probably, because I'm a bit of a tar, I'd probably put on some BBS wheels in gold. Um, yeah, or maybe that's a bit too far, I don't know. Or would that be like E50s or something like that? 
for that period or E20? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Fuck knows. Yeah, I'd probably do something a bit tarty like that. I'm not as sophisticated as you Yeah, are. It's on, they're, yeah. they're 17s. I don't think, that's a, some people go for 18s, but I think I'd keep 17s on it. I guess, yeah, if I had the money, turbo brakes or whatever, just yeah. for a little bit extra on there, but it stops okay. Hmm. So how reliable has the car been? It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I've had kind of some problems. I had a, uh, a coolant hose split on me, um, yeah, end of, towards the end of last mm. year. Uh, I did the clutch slaver master cylinder a couple of weeks ago at home on my, mm -hmm. in the garage. Can we um, pop the bonnet? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll pop the lights down as well. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to find the catch because I've never done these before. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did. Yeah, I did that. But generally speaking, touch wood, it's been fairly good. Yeah. Uh, and it and it sort of drives just like a regular car. It's, you know, I just I just thought of something. Going back a step, I'm just yeah. seeing it because I'm looking at the silver. If you were to repaint it, would you paint it silver or would you go would you go Mitsubishi? I I don't know actually. I don't think I'd go back to silver. Yeah. I think it's too much of well, a bit of a bastard child really mm. that it's been messed around with. If that's and I didn't particularly want one in silver. Yeah. Um, I, I def, nothing against red ones, but I didn't want a red one. You see a lot of red ones. And True. Having had red cars and they all fade to pink, mm. like, True. spent far too many hours of my life polishing pink cars. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess it would probably stay, stay blue. I, um, I love it blue. Like, what's called, it's part of its story, and it's what, it's what makes the car, it's one of the things that made the car, makes the car super unique. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go near it. Mm. with a different colour. The one thing is, whatever you do, paint-wise, if you decide to paint the whole thing and do that restoration, the one thing I would, I would never do is change that bonnet badge. And just leave that original. I, I have this thing about bonnet badges, okay. you know, what's called with old cars, which is like, you can restore the hell out of them, that's fine. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But the badge, that keep that little bit of history. Keep that, you know, what's called that damage that's on it, the scratches, the enamel that's peeling away. That, that for me, is like, it's, 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 it's the little thing that got there, that was put there in Stuttgart and should never come off the car, no matter how fucked it is. That's got, like, yeah, sorry. I've got, um, is it this car? I can't remember, I think it is this car. This one's bent out of shape because of the amount of times the owners have pushed on it to close the bonnet, <laughs> you know? And like the gasket, the gasket, it's not too, too bad actually, yeah, yeah. but it has been bent and the gasket's too small, so I will replace the gasket. But I, I do, funny. I really feel very strongly about about the badges. Not that you should give a shit about what I think, because this is your car and your rules, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> but that's, that's my only little thing. The, yeah, the, I will uh, disown you as a friend. I'll be like, do you know what, Andy? Actually, I don't care about your restoration. Yeah, you've changed the badge. You've ruined it. <laughs> the restoration kind I'm of joking. patina argument, there's, it's, it's, kind of, it's, the, it's the fine line, isn't it, between sort of giving your nan a facelift, mm. which and I guess... Giving like, your nan a facelift, yeah. Like, you talk about the badge, and that's almost like the eyes, isn't it? That's almost kind of the... Yeah. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I mean, like, what's it called? There's, there's no logic to it or whatever. It's just, I don't know, it's just the way I feel. It's just, anyway, that, that's not what's interesting. What's more interesting is we've got the bonnet up, we've got an engine to talk about. So this is a two-and-a-half-litre four-cylinder, yeah? Yeah, two-and-a-half-litre... Yeah, yeah four-cylinder. They're about 165 horsepower, mm -hmm. something like that. This one's got an ECU chip on it, not that it's going to give a huge amount of additional mm -hmm. grunt these days but um yeah it's got that um it, yeah it's got the stainless exhaust so is, is it is, is it a nice engine what's it like is it peaky is it linear is it talky what it's talk it? yeah it's talky yeah. to be fair and yeah really comes alive kind of three and a half four thousand and and, and then out of what rpm i don't know what it goes to six or seven i think okay and it sounds like it sort of shoots some flames i don't know whether it does or not mm -hmm. um Nice. And that could be from fueling on the ECU. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, wants to, it wants to go. Nice. I've probably not had it above 110, something like that. It's uh -huh. probably back straight, at, like that long straight at Goodwood. Yeah. Um, cool. it, it's probably got a little bit more in it. It's not a fast, fast car, but mm. to drive it, it just feels in, involving, engaging. When it's, when it's you and the car, yeah. it's just kind of, yeah, brilliant. Nice. When it's you and the car and then kind of the latest Golf GTI, you're, you're yeah. nowhere because yeah. it's off, but you're having more fun. Yeah. Now, the problem is, is earlier on, you said that you're not too pressured about it and you let other people drive it. So one day I will twist your arm. Uh, yeah, any time. I'd love to. Uh, honestly. I really would love to. Um, I, I've heard people bang on enough about how beautifully balanced these cars and they're better than 911s and so on. And I want to experience that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've 
I've driven a couple of 911s, but literally for five minutes. So yeah, sure. my experience going the other way yeah. isn't, but I, yeah, I lent to a, a friend of mine, he had a go in it. And he, it was the first time he'd driven a 911 mm. actually. And he came back. It was a 944? Kind of, yeah, sorry, first yeah. time he'd driven a 944. He drives 911s for kind of work. Mm. And um, he was really surprised. He was like, it really mm. goes after like three and a half, four thousand. And um, that, having someone come back to me and say it drove well made it even better. That mm. kind of just made me like, okay, I'm really going to, they've found it as well. It's not mm. just me sort of in a sort of a blind, rom vision. blind romantic yeah, pink, sure. pink lens lo yeah, glasses yeah, yeah. going. Um, or it, my car's the, I wouldn't say yeah. my car's the best, but my car's a good car. Like yeah, someone yeah. comes back and go, that was good fun. Yeah. You're like, yeah, okay, nice. cool. Okay, now, what's called, I'm, I'm done with talking about the car. The thing I want to talk about now is you work for Heritage Parts, yep. which is a Volkswagen and Porsche parts supplier. Yeah. And the big thing that you do is Stuttgart South. Yeah, one so of, can, yeah. Can you, t well, one of, <laughs> is, 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 I would say that's the biggest community thing you do, isn't it? Yes, yeah, community-wise, yeah. Wise, yeah. Okay. So it came about, um, I guess, yeah, we were doing Volkswagen Porsche events at work. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess as lockdown came, sort of, sort of car started coming in, all of that took a bit of a backseat. No one could do anything. Yeah. I'd had this bit of an idea for cre creating a, um, a sort of a community and actually, the Stuttgart South, the STGT, came from Sussex Transaxle get together. So I started mm -hmm. doing some 944, sort of 924-esque meets. And that was the plan. I did a couple of those. And then it was a case of actually, I'm going to all the effort of creating this. I've found somewhere to do it. I've advertised it. Mm. Let's just invite everyone along and just make the party bigger. Mm. Um, so yeah, we started doing that. And it, actually that then fell kind of sort of through the lockdowns as it was a, a case of I think 30 people could meet or something like that. I basically, I found a public car park. We all bought tickets to be there. We promised not to hug each other and 50 cars turned up. Mm. And the it was the like first one, 50 first, cars? Yeah, for the first well all, all Porsche one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the first Transax one I think we had, or the first one I did was in the storm and we had two, two other cars, but yeah. the first all Porsche one was 50. Nice. The next month was then like 75. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple and of so months. how many years later are we now? Three years after 2020? What, or, yeah. what was and the, how big was the last one? It was probably only 60 something, yeah, but yeah, I've now nice. got a WhatsApp group with about 150 people on Brilliant. it. I've got people wanting to buy t-shirts from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm deliberately trying to get the events to different places. So we yeah. go out and meet different Porsche owners. We go out and experience different establishments. So yeah. go to different pubs, different cafes. And this is, this is, this is a fun project for you or there's a commercial Are you, side you of questioning it? that? Sorry? <laughs> you're, que you're questioning whether it's, yes, it is fun. No, it, yeah. it's, there's no commercial. Well, it can't be, it can't not be fun. No, I mean, I know you're a car enthusiast yeah. through and through. But what I mean is there, is there a commercial side of this or is it? No, is not, it, no, not yeah. really. So it's um, really just for the love and the purity. Yeah, I did it basically, I got, I got itchy fingers. I needed yeah. to be doing something sure. kind of getting out there doing it. There is, there's an element of, um, yeah, don't put all your eggs over in one basket unless you own the basket. And it is a case that um, I've built a network there mm. around me, which is A, useful for me if I ever need anything. B, it is a benefit to my employees because actually You're connecting with I, I'm connecting with a lot of people yeah. and more people are now aware of Heritage mm. because of what I do with Stuttgart South. There's an, there's, I'll tell you what there is about you. There's an authenticity. Because sometimes you get people that work for like a car brand or they, you know, and they're not really into cars. Um, you know, like what's called the fact that you're, you're the marketing guy for Heritage Parts and you're engaging with the market because it's a passion of yours. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't get more authentic than that. That's you don't go home at, you know, 5 p.m. and call it a fucking day. No. You're out there making these meets. And I came across it because of, you know, your, the, what's called the, um, because of what you're doing on, on, uh, on I, I see it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm guilty of not having been yet because it is a bit of a, a bit of a distance. And to be honest with you, like I haven't had a chance to drive a Porsche since last year's Alpine tour. So, I, you know, my life is, is yeah, one, one day. But um, suffice to say that I saw that and I, I was looking at it and I was thinking, he's really building something here. And you've been so supportive and, and kindly the guys from Stuttgart South have been so supportive and, you know, coming down for Megaphonics and running the trip. Yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate that. I really yeah. do. Because, it, you know, like I said, like an event like that and this place doesn't exist without people believing in it. So... Yeah, from, from my side of things, I, I appreciate it. And it's, it's super cool what you're doing down there. And the other thing is also like, you know, COVID was obviously an awful thing, a horrible thing. But if there is some positive to see, it's amazing how people have come out with, 
out of that period having actually done something um, done something good. I, you've, you've, I, yeah, yeah, you've yeah I took it. a real sort of, I got put on furlough for a month actually, but mm. I kind of, I sat at my desk, basically looked out the window and I said to myself, something's going to come out of this that doesn't yet exist. Mm. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to make it. Yeah, and I basically, yeah. I thought, there's a lot of people who are going to get off this merry-go-round, just let the world continue for mm. two years or whatever mm. it was. I'm going to work my ass off and make something happen. And yeah. obviously in that time I've done Stuttgart South. I created Stuttgart Side Shots, which is the Instagram profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's got 14,000 followers on it. Nice. At one point we were getting 400 followers a day. Like, oh, for Christmas 2020, yeah, yeah. it was bonkers. Yeah. Christmas is always a busy time for social media. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, we did some decent numbers around that time as well. Um, yeah. And yeah, again, I've sort of, uh, uh, networking through that um, met cool. a lot of people. Yeah, the, the Stuttgart South group are really and just, good. And just quickly, because we're running out of time, but um, you've also got a podcast. What's it called? It's, my my dad, it's called My Dad's Car. Yeah, yeah. My Dad's Car. Uh, we talk to, it's not just about dad's cars. We talk to people about the cars they remember from growing up. Yeah. It basically starts all around their earliest car memory. So it's really the genesis of their passion for, for the cars. Uh, yeah. yeah, what they remember, kind of walking to school, what mum or dad were driving. Sure. Um, and, and then it sort of goes on to whether or not maybe that inspired them to buy mm. a Porsche perhaps in the future or a Mini or whatever it might be. Mm. I lost my dad seven years ago. He was kind of a big part of my sort of automotive passion. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of me sort of paying it back to him, yeah, kind of great. giving him a bit of a shout. Yeah, um, I host it with my friend John. He also, yeah, he lost his dad 20 years ago probably. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. I've, that's just turned a year. Nice. Another passion project. Yeah. It's, again, not earning me any money at all, but... Yeah. I'm having fun doing it yeah. and um, yeah, yeah your, really, your passion I'm really enjoying know, it really does come across <laughs> yeah so dude well you know every time I see you it's always a pleasure to catch up with you on, on a friendly basis let alone to talk about you know talk about the car um, I really appreciate you coming all this way because I know it's been a bit of a distance and all of your support um, yeah and I look forward to catching up with you again the next time and finding out you know what other patina you built up <laughs> in the car hopefully yeah <laughs> absolutely no, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure thanks for having me and yeah you're always welcome to take this for a spin sounds good Thanks, Thank you dude. very much, man. Cheers.